to all brothers in the faith, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you that read this prophetic message of the living God about an event that soon shall take place in Puerto Rico and the surrounding Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean. I was named by God himself 40 years ago to be his prophet, to inform his people of his plans, and to declare with great detail what the Lord will do against the wickedness that prevails over his people in all of Puerto Rico and the world, just as it happened with the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 26 from 1 to 6. Please read it. By order of God, I will not hold back one word that he has given me. God has been knocking on all church doors in Puerto Rico, giving them this warning. For the last two years, I have been taking this message to these churches. Out of all 6,000, only a small group of evangelical churches have received the message on God's behalf. Even when the majority of pastors have knowledge and information on God's message and the consequences that this will bring. These pastors do not want to inform the church because they fear the panic that this may cause. They also use the excuse that God is love and that He cannot do this. But they forget that God is also a consuming fire and that He killed Noah's generation. Yet, before God did this, He looked on the earth, and God saw that Noah was a righteous man, and He told Noah of the plans He had, and He told him to build the ark. God also told Abraham of His plans to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. God also raised Jonah as His prophet, and told him what he had to do when he arrived to speak against Nineveh. God gave them an ultimatum of 40 days. I ask you, who allowed the deaths of 250,000 people in a matter of minutes in Haiti? Who allowed for 200,000 deaths in Indonesia by way of a tsunami? Who also allowed, and we saw it with our own eyes, what happened in Japan, where an earthquake and a tsunami both at the same time killed over 220,000 people in one day. Coincidence or not, all of these three events took place during the night. Elders, youngsters, women, men and animals, all taken by surprise. All were in different places, and they all died. Now I ask a question. Does anyone dare say that God is bad? The ones that say that they are in God's church in Puerto Rico. The Word of God says that nothing happens unless He allows it. That is the answer to this biblical assertion. To our understanding, here in Puerto Rico, God has been revealing His message to not only children, but to elders and even to non-believers, just as He did with Pharaoh in Joseph's time. Incredible but true that a pagan pharaoh believed what Joseph told him, unlike God's children, and immediately he gave orders and did as he was told. You can read about this in Genesis 41. But God's island, Puerto Rico, having the Holy Spirit and all of its attributes, does not ask the Holy Spirit if this message is true. Ask God if this is from Him or not. I will explain to you exactly how God will carry out His punishment on that night. If I were a false prophet, my days in front of God would be numbered, just as God pointed out the false prophets in Jeremiah 26 and in all of Ezekiel. Please read. My whole life would be in danger without Jesus my Lord and Savior. I would never say these things of my own accord. I say these things because God has truly revealed them to me. I am informing the Church of Jesus Christ in the island of Puerto Rico that this is final and true. 
on behalf of the living God. It does not matter how much you pray or fast or scream, no matter what you do, God will not change his mind. The Lord told me that this is just like Pharaoh's dream. It will happen. This means that this is serious for God, and God will soon bring it to pass. Genesis 41, 32 There will be three judgments or events happening in the same night. Holding my head up high, I can say that God revealed to me things that no eye has ever seen in these times. He showed me a huge rock, an asteroid, entering from the municipality of Arecibo in Puerto Rico and exiting through Mayagüez. As it exits Mayagüez, the asteroid will collide with the island called Mona to the west of Puerto Rico. Then the asteroid will enter the ocean and collide with the seismic fault, which will then cause an earthquake of 12 points on the Richter scale. At the same time, this impact will produce a large wave, which will enter the island of Puerto Rico immediately. This wave will enter into cities that no one would believe possible, cities like Las Marias and Maricao, where Satanists sacrifice newborn babies. Once this asteroid enters our skies, there will be no time to do anything. There will be nowhere to run. All we can do at that point is give ourselves to God spiritually. If the Lord has not told anyone to get up and go before this happens, then don't move. Stay in your home. All we can do is prepare for what's coming. I am speaking to God's people, as He told me that on that night many Christians will die. The impact of the asteroid will be such that it will feel like a nuclear explosion. God's priority in giving this message of judgment is so that all His people will understand the urgency and content of His message. I will remind you that Scripture says that the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, we do not understand what you are saying. And the Lord told them, Later in private I will tell you what I told them in parables. That's in Luke 8, 10. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. Thusly, I will first explain to Jesus Christ's church. I say with all certainty, that the 12 Richter scale quake will be Jehovah God of the universe himself executing this judgment in person identically as when he executed his just judgment on King David. That is why the Trinity will have their feet touching the ground that night. They will be walking on the island executing the judgment very similar to when God visited Abraham to warn him about his destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. God had no reason to tell Abraham of his plans, but yet he did. Even though many beg to differ, this judgment is brought on due to the church, as much in Puerto Rico as in the rest of the world. When Jesus entered the temple, he saw how his people were viola violating his spiritual etiquette Instead of them going out on the streets and buying and selling what they needed, they did it on the temple grounds, provoking God's wrath. Coincidence or not, we can see how many of God's churches are doing the same things today. They have put aside all that Jesus did by dying on the cross so that we can see Him and the Father. It all comes down to holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The death toll shall be overwhelming. In Puerto Rico alone it will reach 750,000 people. 
the massive wave will be moving at a speed of 400 miles per hour, according to a scientist that studies these phenomena. After the impact, the wave will be taking everything in its path through the Caribbean islands. It will be entering Miami, Florida at around 5 a.m. It will make its way up the eastern United States, also the Gulf of Mexico and South America. As a, as a personal note, experts predict that such a colossal impact would cause the Earth's rotation to cease for three days, meaning the Earth would not rotate for three days, which in turn means that there would be three days of utter darkness on this side of the Earth. If you are reading this message, I dare you, in the name of Jesus, to ask the Holy Spirit if this message comes from God or not. The Lord told me, My servant, why are you trusting in men? He told me, Trust in me. I will never fail you, but men always fail. He told me this after I gave the governor of Puerto Rico the message. The governor did not heed the warnings I gave him, just like Pharaoh in Moses' time. I put my trust in the governor, thinking that he would ask God to be merciful, and that then God's wrath would not be so strong like it happened in Nineveh. Then the Lord told me, Why are you praying for my servant G.J. Avila? He told me, Stop wasting your time. I was praying, asking God to give his servant G.J. Avila, the great Puerto Rican evangelist, more time here on earth, because I knew that Jesus' parting with the Lord, whenever it happened, was to be the sign that God had chosen for Puerto Rico as prelude to this judgment, in order for his true small church to be able to prepare itself, and would be able to escape to the mountains, just like Lot did when the Lord's angels told him where to go. Scripture says that the Lord will not do anything until he first reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Thusly, God, who is in heaven, is being faithful to his servants here in Puerto Rico and to all the righteous in the island. For this reason, he told me, My servant, soon I will take my servant G.J. Avila and I will allow for my people to honor him. He said, As soon as G.J. is laid to rest, Immediately I will send my judgment to the island. It is in God's time, not ours. Personal note. G.J. Avila has now gone to be with the Lord as of June 28 of this year. This message was received by Prophet Rodriguez before G.J.'s passing. I want to inform the Church of Jesus Christ that is in the island of Puerto Rico that this judgment, which is being contemplated by God, will be executed at night, just like with Sodom and Gomorrah. Read Ezekiel 12. I say to the church in the island of Puerto Rico that we will not run or move until the Lord tells us to do so, just like God told Moses when to go out of Egypt. Even when the remains of our brother G.J. Avila are laid to rest in the ground, God's church in Puerto Rico will not move until the Holy Spirit tells us to do so, no matter where we live in the island. Church of Jesus Christ in Puerto Rico, please understand this. He told me, My servant, the big nation, meaning uh, the United States, will not come to help you right away. For this reason I have selected another nation that will help you out first. They will bring food to all of you. This nation is already storing food for you. He said, you will be surprised when I'll tell you which nation it is. He told me, it's Venezuela. I will inform you that on February of 2012, in a video that was seen throughout the world, Hugo Chavez told God, if you are truly God, heal me. 
since neither the witch doctors nor the Cubans had been able to cure his cancer. This was live on the government channel in Venezuela. He told God, You know that I'm saving much food, and I do not want to die, because I want to be the one to give out the food. This is in a video. What did Hugo Chavez know so that he would be so emphatic about this? Or who gave him information prior to the fact? This is an observation that we wrote since his brother, since this brother, Efrain Rodriguez, says that God told him that aid would come from Venezuela, not from its leader, knowing that Mr. Chavez died in March of 2013. The Lord will do with those that say that they are his church, as he did with his people that came out of Egypt. Those who were twenty years or old or older did not see the promised land. He told me that the majority of the Christians in the island will perish that night, and that a new flock will enter the church, including many who do not know God. They will give Jesus their hearts, and together with the righteous that remain alive, will become the new church of Jesus Christ. He also told me, My servant, do you remember Korah? Read the Bible number 16. He asked me this five times. After I shook my head, he told me, That's the same thing that I will do with the majority of the pastors in the island. While the earthquake is at its peak, I will open the ground, and wherever they are standing they will go alive straight to hell, since they are responsible for this judgment taking place. He said, Their substitutes are sitting in the temples, waiting for my order. I dare all those that say that they have the power of God to say and prove that I am lying. I will go to your church and you can rebuke me if I have anything in me that is not the presence of the Lord. He who has the Lord does not run from what God says. He confronts whomever, me or anyone else. They have tried to hide this complete message from God's people. This message is very similar to Jonah's message, the difference being that they believed the message that Jonah brought. Jonah, not Jonas, Jonah. Unlike here in Puerto Rico, where the pastors killed the prophet and the message. On that night, God will ask the pastor where is the flock that he gave into their hands. The Lord told me, My servant, I will make it possible that from the big nation, meaning USA, they will come back to the island and will fill her again. God's church has not realized that we are entering the beginning of birth pangs. In the meantime, the Roman Pope is asking the United Nations to find a man that can take charge of the world's economy. The church wants to go after the world to the point that from the altars they no longer preach that Jesus is coming, since the church leaders have their eyes on other things. Such things are happening that all you see on their weekly church program is information on the youth basketball tournaments, or a field trip, or on such a day the clan will be here, bring the children, or info on the car wash, or dance classes. All of these have replaced the Holy Spirit. Now they practice dances in church, and then they go and dance for the world, which is an aberration. We are not Jewish, they say, and thus many pastors are allo allowing all these things in church in Puerto Rico and all over the world. Who are they entertaining? Meanwhile, adultery is passing through our churches, fornication, women being abused, and also children right inside our temples, homosexuals standing in the altars, or youth being one thing inside the church, but outside they are something else. Men and women inside church practicing witchcraft and cursing us. How is it possible that they have thrown out the Holy Spirit? Who will defend us? In churches, car washes are usually done by the youth group. These car washes usually take place on church grounds. They use the funds they collect to pay for specific church-related needs. 
Nowadays, the pastors are the ones who decide what will be done in the church. It is no longer the Word of God that decides. For this reason, neither the church nor the non-believer will have peace or tranquility in the island, since they have overstepped the parameters of sin, and in the presence of the Lord we were found guilty. We are just waiting for Judgment Day. Since no one wants to preach what Jesus did on the cross, God himself will do now as he did before, by passing judgment on former generations, as previously mentioned in this message. I have said to all that say that today could be the day that the church goes in the rapture, that in this moment the rapture could not take place, since the majority of the church would not make it, due to the church's lack of candidates to go to heaven. The rapture will come after the breaking down of the church that is soon to take place. Then, and only then, will God reap His church in the rapture. This event will be worldwide, and the Holy Spirit has spoken of it. If God does not do it this way, many would be lost, possibly even the righteous. I will remind you that on that night there will be three events occurring simultaneously, not two like the government says, according to their FEMA agencies. At this moment, the U.S. is preparing at a very surprising rate. They are waiting for something to impact all of the Caribbean and Atlantic Ocean. When God told me to speak to our governor, who has a lot of knowledge on what the government agency FEMA is doing in Puerto Rico, it was with the purpose of finding a way for the population to have access to food and medication. He has told me this alert is not to bring panic to the churches. It is for them to prepare themselves. If the population does not know what is going to take place, how will they prepare for such an extraordinary event? I will remind you that an earthquake is not predictable. It can happen today or at any time. I will say what we already know and understand, that FEMA and NASA, the space agency, have joined together by, under, by order of the President, and at this moment we all agree that neither FEMA nor NASA have the authority to divulge any information, as this might cause a worldwide panic. However, God has told His churches in Puerto Rico, no matter what denomination they belong to, to evaluate this message and to prepare themselves with Him. We know that we depend on God more than man to get us through this. So please, as you remember this message, ask God as soon as possible to reveal to you all its truths. To all the pastors in Puerto Rico, the evangelists, the so-called prophets and apostles, the bishops and all who have titles, I say to you that God can also reveal to you what He has revealed to me. We have the same problem that the prophet Daniel faced by surprise when Nebuchadnezzar gave the order to execute all of the wise men from Babylon. We know that Daniel was on the list of those to be executed, but even though God did not warn him ahead of time, Daniel did not remain with his arms crossed when having only one day before he would be executed. I recommend that you do as Daniel did. He asked God to reveal to him all about the king and his plans. That very night, God revealed to Daniel what he needed to know. We too have a death sentence, so ask God now to reveal his will to you. If you do not get an answer, then you need to seriously look at your life and reflect where you went wrong on your walk with God. May God open your eyes so that you might see. Your brother and prophet of the Lord, Efrain Rodriguez. Cell phone number 787 
244-5434, member of the Iglesia de Dios Pentecostal of Camuy, Puerto Rico. Thank you for listening.